I dreamt of a dead shark. My family and I were having a party and my mother asked me to check the oven. When I opened it, there it was. Massive, gray leathered skin, jaw wide open like a steel trap. I dreamt of eating a shark. When I woke up, I met my mother in the hallway. I told her about my dream, how it felt foreboding. Together we went outside and that's when we found the world flooded. Water everywhere. Our neighbors wandering outside, morning days on their faces, homes inundated, families evacuated, sent to sleep on classroom floors in the nearby elementary school. My family and I are descendants of the Ribago clan, the shark clan. Known to control the waves with Roro chants, it was said they could turn the tides with the sound of their voices. They sang songs to the sharks encircling their canoes. We were connected to these white-tipped, slick-bodied ancestors who carved the waters. We would never have eaten them. In the Marshall Islands, I teach Pacific literature. My students read the stories once told by our ancestors around a coconut husk fire. So what stories are we telling ourselves today? What legends are we throwing into the fire? What are we burning? Will future generations recite this story by heart, hand over chest? Maybe in one legend, it'll start by saying, in the beginning was water. Water flooding our homes, our land, and now our only underground reservoir, what we call a freshwater lens. Shaped like the front of an eyeball, nestled deep in coral, feeding on rainwater, it watches us, burning and angry, it is vindictive. It poisons us with salt, leaving us dry and thirsty. Over 6,000 miles away from my island home is the U.S. state of Minnesota. I've read that Minnesota, like the Marshalls, is simultaneously drowning and thirsting. In 2007, 24 Minnesota counties received drought designation, while seven counties declared flood disasters. In 2012, 55 Minnesota counties received drought designation, while 11 counties declared flood emergencies. Climate scientists warn of intensified heat. They say this heat will threaten Minnesota's great north woods, a forest nearly 12,000 years old. Scientists predict that the mixed hardwood and conifer forest will follow glaciers and retreat north by as much as 300 miles in the next century. I imagine a hardwood forest, a hardwood tree, ancient and weary, heaving its tree trunk body to its new home where it will forever mourn its roots. In this legend, identify the theme, the moral, the message. What have we learned? Have we learned anything? What is the archetype of a monster and a hero? Are they one and the same? Here's another story of a tree. On one of our atolls known as Kwajalein, there is said to be a flowering tree that bloomed and grew from the reef itself, a Wutilomer tree. It was said its magical white petals would fall into the water and then blossom into flying fish. On a lazy Sunday, my cousin and I lay side by side on my auntie's veranda, sun drying our skin, and together we dreamed an organization dedicated to people like us, to young people like us, who leapt blind and joyful into water, willing ourselves wings to fly, who dared to dream of a world where forests and islands stay rooted, who believe this world is worth fighting for. I still nightmare of dead sharks, but I'd rather dream. I'd rather imagine our next generation, how their voices will turn the tides, how our underground reservoir will drink in their chants, how they will speak shark songs and fluent fish, how they will leap petal soft, beautiful, unafraid into the water before blossoming to fly.